Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our really special service uh, tonight. Uh, it's been a great four days of celebration for the country, hasn't it? But this is the pinnacle. I did invite the Queen, but she said she was otherwise engaged and feeling a little sore from the activities of the last four days. But um, nevertheless, it's lovely to see all of you here. And uh, a particular welcome um, to James and Brian and Jin and Matt, who are all coming to be, but Jin's not here. Jin's gone. I was there. All oh, right, hi. I was expecting more on the end. Who are all coming to be baptised this evening. It's very exciting, and we have been really looking forward to this service for a long time. And I want to say a special welcome to um, those of you who have come here as friends and uh, family of the four who are getting baptised, and particularly if you don't normally come to church. You know, it's really brave to come to this sort of thing when you don't know what's going on. Just please, this is a place where we're really relaxed. Join in with whatever you feel comfortable with joining and feel really at home. Um, the songs will be all up on displays on the screen and other words too. So uh, join in with whatever you are able to join in with. Uh, we'll explain what we, um, as we go along, what um, baptism is and what the different parts of the service are. And there are, th especially the children, there are three special symbols that you might like to look out for. There's the cross, there's the water, a bit of a hint, it's in there, and there's some candles as well. So look out for those three symbols as the service goes on. But for now, we just want to say that these four um, young men um, have all decided that they want to follow Jesus, and they become Christians, and today, you know, this step of baptism for them is that public declaration that, that they want to follow Jesus, that they've made that decision for the rest of their lives to follow Jesus, and it's so exciting because I know some of their stories, and uh, they're great stories which they will share later. And so today, in many ways, is their official welcome into the church family, even though, you know, they've all been part of the church family for quite some time, but the official welcome into the church family. So uh, we're really excited to um, just hear your stories, which will be uh, just in a few minutes, and then to share in this baptism with you. So I'm going to say a prayer first of all and then we're going to sing a couple of songs, songs of praise to uh, our special God who has met each of these four guys and um, brought them to faith. So let me first of all pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this special day. Thank you for Matt and for Jin and James and Brian who have come to be baptised this evening. And we pray your special anointing on them, that you will meet them in a really deep way tonight. And as we watch and as we hear their stories, would you draw each of us closer to you too? And just draw us another step along our journeys of faith as well. So we thank you for who you are, we praise you for who you are, and we offer you our worship right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
way where there seems no way. Thank you that you are a miracle worker. Thank you that you bring light in people's darkness. Thank you that you turn lives around. Thank you for the lives turned around that we're going to hear of tonight. And we just give you praise and we give you glory. And we say thank you for being the way maker, the miracle worker, the light in our darkness. Amen. Do take a seat. I'm going to um, invite each of the candidates to come up and introduce themselves and just share a little bit of their story. So um, Jin is going to come and join us first. This is Jin. And I have a very special relationship with Jin, as he will share a little bit of later. So over to you, Jim. Hello, everyone. Uh, lovely to see you all. For some of you who may have seen my testimony on um, Easter Sunday, apologies, I am going to repeat some of the same jokes. Um, <laughs> and I didn't plan it that time, and I haven't planned it this time, so inevitably it's going to be a little bit different, because I don't remember what I said last time. So um, I guess I start, my story starts with the fact that I was, as, for as long as I can remember, I'd been an atheist quite an um, annoying atheist as well. I was, you know, religion, religion wasn't for me. And it was, the way, it, it was that way up until about a year ago. Um, so about a year ago, uh, me and my... Well, actually, I should mention, I, I met my wife and we got married five years ago, and she is Christian. So that was my first kind of experience of being close to Christianity. But because of my non-religious views, she didn't really speak to me about it um, and didn't make those conversa conversations very fun or easy for her. But then a year ago, we moved in with my, my in-laws, uh, Jan and Clive Hounsfield, um, which is in Malvern. Uh, the, we, due to sort of financial difficulties, they very, very kindly, kindly took us in. And whilst I was... So we're, we're, so we're living with in-laws, right? You with me? <laughs> we moved in with the in-laws. It's rent-free. It's great. And they got a hot tub too. It's fantastic. And I was going through some some personal issues, as as we all do. I was running my own business. I was I was really stressed. I was suffering with a lot of anxiety and depression. I'd also this is the part I left out of my story last time. I'd also been in recovery for addiction for the past five years. Now, a combination of being at the Houndsfields, hearing. UCB on the radio all day long, and, <laughs> and then joining a 12-step program. Now, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the 12-step program. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands if you are. But it's a, it's a recovery, recovery program which has Christian origins. It's now open to all faiths and beliefs, but one of the biggest parts of following a 12-step program is having a higher power, which is a was a really alien concept for an atheist. You know, there was, there was, in my world, there was no higher power. So, but I had to start thinking about this. Was it going to be, it started off as, you know, the universe, nature, maybe the meeting, the people in my meeting, Harry Potter, you know, I very strongly considered Harry Potter being my higher power. <laughs> so I was in this place now where I'm thinking about higher powers, I'm listening to UCB, and I was also, um, my good friend Malcolm, who's here today, um, He's the rector at Bishop's Cleave Church in Cheltenham. And he was also kindly giving me counselling sessions. And Malcolm would always say, keep an open mind towards Christianity. So there's all these things, all these weird things going on in my life with, you know, Christian messages everywhere. And where things started to really ramp up, let's say, is um, Esther, my wife, told Jan, my mother-in-law, that I was struggling. Um, and I was suffering with a lot of anxiety at this, at this point in time. It's about nine months ago now. So Jan kindly offered to pray for me. Um, repeat joke warning. If you're living with your in-laws rent-free, you say yes to everything. <laughs> so I, I said, yes, Jan, please, please do pray for me. Um, so Jan sat me down, uh, one hand on my shoulder, one hand on my heart. I remember it like it was yesterday. Closed my eyes, and she started praying out loud for me. Um, Something really, I guess at the time, what I felt something really weird going on here. And she then broke out into praying in tongues. 
which is, again, blew my mind. I didn't know Jan could speak another language. So this, this now she's speak, uh, praying in tongues for me. It's all a bit overwhelming. I burst out crying um, and everything, all this kind of anxiety I've been holding on to. I haven't got to nine the time, by the way. Sorry, if you can tell me when to get off. Um, so it all just comes flooding out. All this emotion comes out. And then I had, from Malcolm's mentioned it before, Esther's mentioned it before, about doing this alpha course. At this point, I thought, all right, let me, let me see what this alpha course is about. Unfortunately, the Alpha course was, start, it was starting here at St. Andrews on a Wednesday evening, which clashed with my 12-step meeting in Cheltenham, so I couldn't attend. But Jan said, how about I put you on the phone to Dave Bruce, who's the, are you a rector as well? He's a rector at St. Andrews. Um, so I called I call Dave. Um, Dave was obviously lovely on the phone and said, I heard you having some, going through some struggles. Do you want to come and have a chat with me at the church? I was like, absolutely. So came down to St. Andrews, it's going back to think last August, September, it's a lovely sunny day, we were sitting out the front with a view of the hills, and we just had a chat, I just told Dave everything about what's been going on in my life. Um, Dave offered I can have like a one-to-one -one alpha course, so he'd send me these YouTube videos that I can watch on my own time, come back every week and discuss it with him and, you know, challenge him, ask him any questions I have, and again, I was very grateful for this opportunity, so I said, yes, absolutely, so... I leave, he sends me these videos, I watch a couple of them, it's a Nicky Gumbel series, if anybody's seen it. Um, I was quite surprised by what I saw, it was, um, yeah, I was quite entertained by it all, and not in a ha-ha way, but it was, it was sort of quite interesting. So I came back the following week, sat down with Dave, we discussed things, he asked if I had any questions, I didn't really actually, you know, I was quite, um, yeah, the whole, I was quite more open to it than I ever thought I had been, by it, I mean, obviously Christianity. Um, halfway through that meeting, I said to Dave, where, um, what brings you here then, Dave? What's your story? And Dave said um, he used to be a physics teacher. And at this point, I just had this sort of light bulb moment, and I just suddenly saw Dave for who he was. And Dave, <laughs> turns out, was Mr. Bruce, who was my old form tutor 17 years ago previously at school. So now everything's like, oh, this is too much. This is all too much. At this point, like, I, coincidences didn't exist, and I thought... There has to be a God, because when I left school in my last year at school in Cheltenham, I was going, my, my cousin unfortunately died tragically in a car crash. He was only 19 years old at the start of that year. So that year was a really difficult year for me. And Dave, being my form tutor, was heavily involved in facilitating what I do next in life. And it was a big decision. It was a kind of school as well where people don't just leave sort of before they finish school. Um, Dave helped to organise getting all the people involved, my careers counsellor, my parents, head teacher, etc., etc. So it wasn't just any old school year. It was, it, was a, it was a year where I really needed Dave in my life. And then 17 years later, when I also needed somebody in my life, Dave just, well, now I know God brought Dave back into, into my life. He's not from Malvern. I'm not from Malvern. We just happened to end up here. And um, since then, you know, well, you know, obviously I'm here. So uh, I'd just like to thank God and thank all the people that have come to support me today, and um, Jan is like my spiritual leader, and Dave, thank you for everything you've done for me as well. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Jim. We've got Brian now, who's going to be really brave and come and share a few words, not as many as Jim's. But, um, he hasn't got as long a life to tell yet. But, um, go on. All right. uh, mine's not obviously as much as Jim, but um, I've been waiting to get baptised for over two years now. Um, I've even begged my mum to baptise me in the bathtub during the first lockdown in 2020. I even wanted to get baptised because... No, I wanted to get baptised because I've been going through to church since I was since I was little, and I feel that that really helped me with my knowledge and relationship with God. I feel like getting baptised will make my relationship with God much stronger. Brian and I have had some lovely chats just, uh, and he's just really shared all of the, what he knows of faith, and you know, he's a really great little growing Christian, which is lovely. Um, Matt, where's Matt? You're next. Come up, Matt. Uh, 
Hi. So I'm going to start with a question, a question that I've been asking most of my life, which is, why am I here? Um, and it's a good question, and why am I here today is a good question too. Um, so I suppose I had my first spiritual experience, although I didn't accept it as such at the time, uh, 22 years ago on the 11th of January in the year... Hello, Gus. <laughs> Hi. On the, it was the 11th of January in the year 2000, and if... And at the time, I was working as a ship's master, a mariner. And, and the date's really important if you're in the maritime community because it's the day that we lost the Solway Harvester with all souls on board. Um, and if you are going to pray at the end, I would ask for you to pray for the families and for the crew of the Solway Harvester that went down that night. Um, and in some way, I feel I'm bound to that. Um, it was, I was 21 and it was my first command of a vessel as a solo captain. Um, looking back now, it's a pretty foolish thing to do at 21. It was January, um, the commission was to sail through Biscay um, with one, one other crew member. Um, the weather was rotten, um, but I was 21 and invincible. Um, <laughs> so I took it, I took it anyway. Um, it was an ill-fated trip, I have to say. Um, I set off from, from La Coruña um, and um, out into the Bay of Biscay. And very quickly things started to go wrong, very, very wrong. Um, I, lost, I lost the engine, I had no engine power. Um, the one crew member I had with me, um, he, was, he became very, very ill. It became very apparent to me um, that he couldn't, he couldn't stay on the boat. Um, but with no power um, and very little wind, I couldn't get back to shore. And so I put out a pan pan, and he was medevaced off the deck, uh, leaving me alone on the vessel. Um, all, I suppose, all in some respects okay at this point. Um, but as the night progressed on, I started to hear the radio um, messages. I heard the mayday um, from, from the harvester, and I heard the relays coming from, uh, from the harvesters um, as that message was shared across the ocean, and boats attempted to come to um, Solway harvesters' aid. Um, and then the radio went quiet. And the Solway Harvester was caught up in one of the most ferocious storms. Um, and the storm system, you know, I was 200 miles south and the storm was moving south. Um, and so really all I could do was to sit and prepare for the storm. And I did all the usual things that you would do on a boat preparing for a storm. Um, but really I was very young, not much experience. And when the storm did hit, it was then, and is still now, the most um, ferocious weather I've ever encountered in my life. I, it was terrifying. Um, I lost the mainsail, I lost the foresail, I had no engine power, and I managed to get a storm jib up um, to give me some sort of forward motion. And in a boat, in a storm, the thing that you really need to do is to keep the head of the boat to wind. You have to stay on the track and you have to stay on the path, and there's some symbolism there that you may take, I certainly do. Um, it was a terrible night. I was very frightened. I felt alone. I put out a mayday and the French Coast Guard couldn't come and give me a tow um, into port because the sea was too rough and there were a lot of vessels out that night who were putting out similar distress calls and were also unable to be taken in. And so, I did what many desperate men do, um, and I prayed. I said the only prayer that I knew at the time, which was the Lord's Prayer, because we all had that at school. And like Jin, I was a devout atheist, and probably quite an annoying atheist uh, at, at it, um, who would often ask, you know, what's your proof? Where's your evidence? Why do you do this? Um, and so I'll just be honest about that. Um, but I prayed into the storm and into the dark, and a bird, um, this is going to sound really weird, um, a bird ghosted through the rigging, and um, it was an albatross, and there are two very odd things about this, is that a, a bird has no place out in a storm like that, um, and an albatross has no place um, in, in, in the middle of the Bay of Biscay. It's not a normal bird to see there, I know, I've been on the route a lot of times. Um, and the bird circled the boat. Um, for 24 hours, I clung to the helm of that boat without any water or any food. And this bird ghosted in and out of the rigging. 
And it wasn't so much about the bird, but the presence I felt with this, with this bird, that I, felt, I suddenly felt warm and I felt safe. Um, and I didn't feel frightened anymore. And it was the most peculiar experience of my life. And so into the storm, I sort of made my peace with life and death. And, and, and believe me when I say I thought I was going to die, and I genuinely think I should be dead. Um, I, there is no logical reason why I should survive a set of conditions like that. Um, and so I'm left again with the question, why am I here? And I sort of laid bare all of the good things I'd done in my life. And I said sorry for all of the bad things that I'd done. And I thought about all the people I loved. And I waited to die. Um, but the storm abated, and I didn't die. Um, and I eventually did manage to get that boat into the approaches to Brest on the western coast of France. Um, and, um, and ashore. And I suppose it would be lovely for me to stand here and say, I had an epiphany and I turned to, I turned to religion, uh, but I didn't. I turned away and I went about my life, uh, much as I had before, um, and forgot about it. Um, and then, this, I suppose, the second thing that I wanted to to talk about um, is uh, meeting my wife. So, probably the single most important person in my journey to faith is Elizabeth. It's my wife who sat there, one, two, three, four rows back with my children. Um, when I met her, I was um, still a devout atheist despite this incredible experience and many others um, that I sort of put aside. Um, I even had a book by Richard Dawkins, which I don't have any more. Um, I'm sorry to say. And, um, and it was really through my wife that I came to church and came to explore my faith. And so this seems like a good time, I suppose, to say thank you. And to say that I love you for this and for many other things. And so the third thing I wanted to talk about was baptism. Because, you know, it, here I am after all of these um, experiences. Um, I've almost got baptised two or three times now and some things always turn me away and I've always put it to one side and the last couple of weeks have been really tough um, and I thought a couple of times about stepping away but I'm not, I'm not going to turn away this time this time I'm going to turn to Christ and I'm going to go through with my baptism Thank you so much, Matt, and finally, James. Evening, everyone. So, what has brought me to this moment? I've been happy to come to this church for many years, happy to be a spectator, happy to sing the songs, to pray a bit, to make good friends, but with no sense of intention. The benefits of this spiritual community were plain, but were they open to me? If pushed, I would have said God must exist, but I felt distant from this impersonal force. But I kept coming, kept listening, kept thinking about what I'd heard. I read a bit more as well. Um, John Mark Comer spoke to me about a personal God who's so close and accessible through spiritual practices, and how the other side uses quiet, subtle lies to keep you in the dark. Maybe my head was coming around to a personal God. But with so little faith, I needed a connection. Now, there was no denying my sense of awe during Holy Communion. I really wanted to join in, but the voices in my head always said, no, you don't have the right pass, so just hang back. Now, Anna, my wife, pretty much pushed me into asking Dave if I could, then, if I can, if I could and should take Holy Communion. A definite and immediate yes followed by a, 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 followed by a when you're ready to make a commitment to Jesus, just let me know. So this really pleased me. 
But the voices said, OK, take Holy Communion, but don't go committing to anything that you might regret. The very next time I came to church, the service included Holy Communion, and I felt a deep sense of peace. I remember the next time um, I came to church, it was Holy Communion again. The voices had started. It's just a coincidence. But this time I pray before I go up. I pray deeply. I can't remember what I prayed for, but I remember feeling a deep sense of awe. I'll never forget the sight of the wafer as it was given to me. It just felt, it also just felt too heavy. And I remember thinking, I, I can't put this in my mouth. So I went back to my seat, still holding it, like it was the most precious thing in the world. And I finally did put it in my mouth. Now I've had COVID since last August, and I still haven't tasted anything since then, still. Except the overwhelming taste of the wine that hit me at the moment the wafer went into my mouth. Now the voices in my head were struggling. It's just a coincidence you've recovered your sense of taste during communion. Would have happened at some point. But the voices didn't seem to have even convinced themselves. I felt overwhelmed and so at peace. The next week I couldn't make it to church, and I know that sounds crazy now, but Anna, my wife, went. And when she came back, she was really excited. You should have come, she said. She tells me that Helen, who administered communion that, the previous week, came to find Anna after the service. Helen and Anna had only met briefly before. She asked Anna who the man in front of her in the line had been last week, and Anna eventually realised Helen was talking about me. Where is he in his faith, Helen had asked. Helen went on to describe how when she administered Holy Communion, the Holy Spirit came down into her and through her arm and was trying to reach me. She described this as an overwhelming sense of the Holy Spirit flowing through her body and out of her arm. Her arm felt as if it was burning. Anna tells me that I replied calmly, I, I know I felt it too. Then Anna told me how she remembered that after I turned back to walk back to my seat that previous week, Helen's arm had been shaking. At this point, Anna and I are just staring at each other over the kitchen table. The internal voices had nothing to say at this point. Anna said to me, the Holy Spirit wants to reach you. So what do I do? Pray that it comes into your heart. But it can't be that simple. Surely the way to the truth is more complicated than that, I think. But the next morning I got up early, went downstairs and made a simple prayer for the Holy Spirit to come into my heart. When I opened my eyes, everything was the same. Now, not given to early rising, I hadn't heard Anna had come down to see where I was. She asked me why I was staring at the table in the dark. And yet, I told her everything was completely different. This moment has been compared to when a pilot realises they've been flying their plane upside down and finally flips the plane the right way up. I'd say now things that used to worry me weren't even coming to mind. Calmer in challenging situations. Negative emotions that still arise feel more distant. More present. I even keep saying things and then thinking, do I really think that now? For a while, and then the voices came back with a vengeance. Just a coincidence, you imagined it. It's a spirit, but it's not the one in the Bible. It's powerful, but it won't last. It wants you, but don't trust it. All the lies that have kept me from the truth poured into my head and left me exhausted. But even with such little faith, these voices weren't fooling me this time. One question did seem to be getting traction, though. Why has this happened at my age? Why now? If this is true, why has it taken me so long to see this? The next Sunday, I saw Helen, but before I could ask her, Helen told me plainly and warmly, everyone's path to faith is different. I prayed and fell back on God and felt my microscopic faith restored. Next time I see Dave, he offers me baptism on Pentecost and I can't say yes quick enough. For the next couple of weeks, I feel like I'm in a struggle. So I pray, I read, I do the Alpha course with Dave, I pray a bit more, I try fasting, doesn't go so well. I watch a play here called The Fisherman's Tale, which is for children, but it had a strangely strange effect on me. 
and I am deeply glad that others were praying for me during this time. And so I'm here. I made it. This is the moment, after drifting slowly down the river for years, then during these past few weeks, the water's unexpectedly rushing me, taking me ever closer to the edge, and I'm now about to go over the waterfall. Jesus has called me to be a disciple, and there's no turning back once you go over the edge. Everyone's path to faith is different. But some great stories there of how, how God has met each and every one of them in the right way that they needed to be met. We're going to do the first bit of the baptism service now, which... Just get my clicker. Um, do, do you want to come right up here? Otherwise, you're not going to get on the video, and you want to, they want to see you on the video. Welcome to everyone watching later on this week. I um, hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. So there's some, some uh, um, questions to ask them, and there's a couple of questions to ask you guys as well. Uh, these first bits are just them just sharing uh, just uh, publicly that they want to take this step. So, um, you guys, uh, do you wish to be baptised? I do. And are you ready with your own mouth and from your own hearts to affirm your faith in Jesus Christ? I am. Today we thank God for these candidates who come to be baptised. Christ welcomes them into his church. So a question for all of you, all of us. Will we help these, our brothers, brothers, to become part of God's family? Yeah. We will. And will we promise to support them as they begin their journey of faith? Yeah. We will. And what we come to now is, is the decision. You know, each of these guys, as they talked, have made a decision. And what they're going to say now is they're going to say two things which they turn away from and two things which they turn towards. And, you know, this bit is what Christians call repentance. It's we turn away from our old way of life, of living our own way, of living with our selfish desires, our, our sins, as the Bible calls them. And we say, I don't want to live that life any longer, and I'm sorry for living that way and living without gods. And then they turn around 180 degrees and say, instead, I now want to follow Jesus. I want to live Jesus' way. So we all wander from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask you guys, do you turn away from sin? Turn away from sin. Do you reject evil? I reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as saviour? Do you trust him as lords? And this is where we're going to sign them with the first symbol, which was what, everybody? The cross, that's right. So we're going to sign them with the cross. And that symbol of the cross, you know, is that most important symbol of the Christian faith. The cross which Jesus died on, which signifies lots of things. It signifies God's love for each of us. That God deeply, deeply loves each one of us. The cross symbolizes that forgiveness that God uh, offers us, that, that whatever we've done wrong, whatever the past has been, on the cross, Jesus took all those sins, all that evil, all that bad stuff, all our mistakes, and he took the punishment himself for them, that we might be forgiven, that we might be able to be friends with God again. And it's also that symbol of, I think of it as the badge, the badge of a Christian, just like you might have a, a school badge or a business badge on you. It's that badge which says, you know, I am Jesus' special child and nothing in the world can take that away from me. So, I'm going to sign each of you with this cross now. So, uh, Jim, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Brian, Christ claims you from his own, for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. James, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. And Matt, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. So do not be ashamed of Christ. 
You are his forever and nothing can take that away. Let's say together, stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. Amen. So may Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. We're going to let these guys just take off anything else that they need before they go into the water. And we're going to sing uh, another song. Um, we're going to sing Oceans, which is particularly relevant for Matt. <laughs> but it speaks of God protecting us in the storms of life too. So you guys go and, uh, and take your shoes and socks off in the vestry and then come back when you're done and we'll stand and sing.
As we stand, we're going to just declare the faith that we're baptising them into. David Beckham once said uh, uh, about his children, he said, I want to baptise my children, but I'm not sure what faith I baptise them into. Well, we're going to make it absolutely sure what faith we're going to baptise them into. So let us fir affirm together with those who are being baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So I'm going to invite you all to sit. I'm going to invite the families and anyone who's going to come and um, help baptise them or speak, come up to the front now. Um, and first thing we've got to do is we're going to just say a blessing over this water. This water is nice and warm. It's good. So we're going to say a special prayer of blessing. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. He was baptised in the River Jordan when your Spirit came upon him and revealed him as the Son you love. He sent his followers to baptise all who turned to him. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that those who are baptised in it may be cleansed in the water of life and filled with your Spirit. May, you know, may they know they are loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. And so the water is the second symbol, isn't it? We've had what, what so far? The cross so far, and this is the water. Now, can anyone tell me what we use water for? Yeah, what do we use water for? For drinking. For drinking, that's right. Water gives us life, doesn't it? If we didn't, have, if we didn't drink, then actually we wouldn't have life. So it's life-giving water. What else do you use water for before you, perhaps before you go to bed at night or first thing in the morning? A shower for washing yourself, don't you? And that water, you know, symbolises the fact that, you know, Jesus, because of the cross, washes us clean. That we no longer have to carry around any shame and guilt and all the mistakes of our past anymore, but that Jesus washes us clean. And what we're going to do with these guys is they're going to go, they're going to stand up here, first of all, and then they're going to go right back underneath the water and come up again. And they're going to go completely under. And what that symbolises is that actually they're dying to the old life. The old life where they followed their own ways and they, they lived, lived just the way without gods. And they're rising up to a new life in gods. Where, you know, they're going to live with God forever. You know, these guys are already doing that. But this symbolises just what they've already done and what they've already committed to do. So, um, we're gonna, I'm going to have a helper um, for each one. And Malk is going to come and uh, help baptise Jin. First of all, and then he's going to help with Matt too. Um, it's great to have Malk here. Malk and I were, when in my sending church in Cheltenham, Malk was the vicar next door. So it's so lovely to see Malk again and be doing this with Malk. Um, Jan, are you going to say something for, for Jim before we... Yes, yeah, I'm going to put pray. Put him under, great. You pray for him. Can I just first... Can I just first read something that's been very precious to me for a long time and I want it to be for you, Jin. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Father, 
We thank you for this privilege of praying for Jim. And we know, Lord, we love him deeply and he's so precious to us. But how much more is he precious to you? You loved him so much more that you gave everything for him. And Lord, as you hung on that cross, you were ripped apart for him and for each one of us. And we love you, Lord, and Jin loves you. And I pray for the Holy Spirit to fill him and to take his, his life into your hands, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. In Jesus Christ's powerful name, amen. amen. Lord, we believe this to be a red letter day for Jim, a life changing day. And we pray that the newness and freshness of his faith, the vitality and enthusiasm of his faith, and the boldness of his faith will never leave him. Amen. Amen. In you come, Jim. So, Jin, uh, on profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, Matt, you're next. <laughs> yeah, perhaps on your own. <laughs> um, yeah, you get in first. Yeah, get, go and get in first, and then I'm going to pray for you. So, um, Matt, I want to um, just uh, share a verse with you too. You asked that question of why, why are you here? Well, a, a verse that we looked at when we did our baptism prep is Ephesians 2, verse 10, which says this, and it says this for each one of us. For we are God's workmanship, or God's masterpiece, I like particularly, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And I know that you are God's masterpiece. God has created you just as God wanted to. And I know that already you've been doing amazing works. Your heart for justice, your heart for, for, for just being... The, the right God's values in your workplace just shines out of you. And I know that God's got some great things in store for you, which you don't even know about yet. And so my prayer is that, you know, in the coming days and months and years, that you would know just what God has called you to. And that in the power of the Spirit, you would live out that purpose and bring glory to God's. So, Father God, I thank you so much um, for this man. I thank you so much for him coming to faith. And I pray your blessing on him, that you would use him powerfully in the future to bring in your kingdom, and that he would know more and more your great love for him. Amen. So, step further forward. Benjamin's a bit. So, uh, Matt, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, you can't wait, can you, Brian? In you go. <laughs> Do you want to jump in first? Jenny, are you going to share something? Pray for him. Right. I'll make this quick. I just want to bless you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace.
So, Brian, uh, on profession of your faith, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And last but not least, James. We're not used to doing four, I'm just <laughs> getting progressively wetter and wetter, don't we? Um, and he's going to say a few words next day. Um, I was trying to remember when I first met James. I can't remember exactly the first day it was, but I remember it was about 13 years ago. It was when Thomas and Holly first started primary school. Um, I remember when I first met him, although I don't remember the first day, um, I met a guy who was honest, righteous, upstanding, everything I expected to see in a Christian, but you weren't. Over the following years, I saw through various camping trips and family outings, I saw what a loving father you were, uh, what a loving father you were and what a loving husband you were to Anna, and what a committed husband you were to Anna. And it was here at this church where I saw that commitment at its best, because you weren't necessarily somebody who had a faith yourself, but you came with your wife to support her as she followed her faith and listened to God's word. And to see that journey as God's word rested on you, and to see that word over the years, because it has taken a little while, hasn't it? Um, to see that word rest on you and for you to question things and see you grow, to see Thomas's baptism and see how proud you were as he had been baptised, and to see you now, uh, ran that fire pit a few months ago, or a month ago, and to see you brimming with love for God and for the Holy Spirit, you inspire me and you fill me with hope. I just wanted to give you just a couple of words um, which I personally find strengthening. First one's from Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, my righteous right hand. The second one was from John 16, 33. I have told you these things, so in me you will have peace. In this world you will have troubles, but take heart, for I have overcome this world. You've always been a friend, James, but soon I'll be able to call you a brother. So James is going to have the privilege of being baptised by his son. <laughs> and I'm going to have the privilege of joining them. So James, it's with great pleasure on profession of your newfound faith that I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> So may God, who has received all of you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of Christ's pilgrim people, you may be daily renewed by his anointing spirits and come to the inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Let's give him another round of applause. So we're going to let the candidates go and uh, get changed while we sing um, the song we should have sung last time, which I got out of order.
follow that. I mean, Lucy and I are a little bit tearful, so you'll just have to bear with us. <laughs> the day that these guys have been baptised, but it's a really special day to be baptised because it is Pentecost. Uh, Pentecost is um, often said that, that Pentecost is the day when the church, as we knew it, was born. It's the birthday of the church. And it's the day when a bunch of scared, confused followers of Jesus, who had just seen Jesus uh, die, rise from the dead, and then go back into heaven, and they were left on their own, they were transformed. And here's just a little video which just says a little bit of what happens that day.
When the day of Pentecost came, all the disciples were huddled together in a room in Jerusalem. Suddenly, the sound of a roaring, rushing wind came from heaven and filled the entire house. The disciples saw what looked like tongues of fire coming to rest on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, who enabled them to speak in other languages. Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the Jewish Passover, so there were many Jews from all over the world staying in Jerusalem. These Jews were amazed, but also confused that the disciples were able to speak in languages they could understand. They said to each other, we can hear them declaring the wonders of God in our native languages. What does this mean? But some of the people laughed at the disciples and said that they must be drunk. Then Peter stood up, raised his voice and said, fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let me explain, listen carefully. These people aren't drunk. It's only nine in the morning. No, this has happened to fulfill what God foretold through the prophet Joel in the Old Testament. God said that in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all people and they will prophesy. There will be miraculous signs and wonders before the day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Jesus performed many miracles to show you that he was God's son, yet you put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But this was God's deliberate plan and God raised Jesus from the dead just as King David foretold and has now poured out his spirit on his people. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, Lord and King. When the crowd heard this, they were cut to the heart and asked Peter, what should we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the Holy Spirit. Amazingly, 3,000 people believed in Jesus as their king and were baptized at Pentecost nearly 2,000 years ago. That was the start of the early church and many, many people becoming Christians and following Jesus as their king down through the ages to the church where you're sitting in today. And that's why we celebrate Pentecost. It must have been quite uh, an experience for the crowd that day. You know, they were all there gathered and suddenly they, they heard this rushing wind and uh, maybe even saw the tongues of fire on, on, on the heads of these, uh, these, these believers. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, at nine o'clock in the morning, these followers of Jesus just started coming out and speaking in, in different languages, in their own language, telling them about Jesus' death and his resurrection. I wonder what you would have made of it if you'd been in the crowd that day. You know, we're told in the crowd that there were a whole load of different reactions I wonder whether you spotted some of them on the video. You see, some thought these, these guys were just mad. They, 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 they thought they'd lost the plot. They said they must be drunk. Some were just confused and, and wondering what was going on and trying to make sense of it all. But others, some 3,000 of them, say it says were cut to the heart. You know, what this message was, you know, just cut them to the heart. And, and they knew that they had to respond. And they responded by, by saying, we too believe and can you baptise me? You know, they had 2,996 more baptisms that day than we've had today. 
You know, tonight we've heard four different stories of people who each tell their own story of their encounter with God. And on this Pentecost, you know, 2,000 years after the first, I wonder what you make of it. Particularly, I want to just, I wonder, for those of you who don't normally do church and don't normally do God, I wonder what you make of it. I wonder if you have uh, some of the reactions that those first people in that first Pentecost had. Maybe some of you are thinking, oh, it's just a bit mad, it's just... Uh, I think they've lost the plot a bit. Perhaps they've been had too much communion wine with their wafer. Some of you may be just thinking, yes, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I can see these guys that I know and there's a difference in them, but I don't quite understand it. I don't quite know how it all fits together. And there may be others of you who are saying, I want that. There's something there that, that I want. I want what they've got. Can I find out what it is too? You know, the message of Christianity is that, you know, we have a God who loves each and every one of us and longs to get to know us. We have a God who loves us so much that he came down in the person of Jesus to to be with us, to show us what God was like, to show us how he wants us to live and, and and then to die for us on that cross that we might know forgiveness, that we might be put right with God again, that we might be able to be God's friends again and have all the promises of eternal life and life in all its fullness now. And of course, that Jesus didn't stay dead, the Bible says, but three days later, he came back to life to show that death was defeated and that one day, if we know Jesus and if we've turned and repented and, 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 and said, I want to follow Jesus, that we will be with God in heaven for all of eternity. And that God longs to re- us for us to respond to him. That God longs for us to get to know him. However resistant you are, you know, we've had two people here today who say they're, they were absolute atheists. And yet God found them. God found them in a storm. God found them in the depths of, you know, really difficult situations. That's often where God finds us. And I just want to say, you know, if you're sitting there and if you're in one of those camps of, I don't quite know about this, but I'd love to find out more. Then, you know, I've done Alpha with Jin and I've done Alpha with James and we're about to do a, a, another course called, uh, called the Start Course, which is starting in three weeks' time on the 22nd of June. You know, I'd love to give you one of these and and, and invite you to come and join us and come and explore this story more. Or there might even be some of you who say, you know, I've known this story a bit. You know, like James. James had sat in this church for, for weeks, Sundays on end. And yet, that Sunday, God met him. And he knew he needed to respond and do something different. You know, maybe there may be other people here who that is the case of as well, that you've sat in church for, for, for Sundays on end, but you haven't taken that step. Like James hadn't. But now you say, I want to. You know, there's another little booklet called The Big Welcome, you know, which I'd like to give anyone if you're ready to take that step or if you want to explore too, which just explains a little bit more of this amazing story we've been telling tonight. But I want to encourage you. You know, these guys are great guys. These guys are different guys. These guys have been transformed because they say they've met a God who knows them and who loves them. And I believe that God wants to meet and get to know each and every one of us. You know, if you'd like to talk more about that, you know, I'm at the door and I'd love to talk to you or pick up these or email me um, uh, or chat to, chat to these guys that you've come with. But we would love to do this journey with you too. We're going to um, just have the final symbol. We're going to skip one song and we're just going to have the final symbol. So can I invite James and uh, Matt and Jin and Brian back up to the front again? I can go on to the last PowerPoint, please. And uh, the last symbol, can anyone remember what it was? Alfie. Fire, yeah, that'll do. Fire in the form of a candle. You know, there's fire because it's Pentecost today. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you each, do you want to come and grab them, each a candle.
And uh, these candles are, um, are there to represent, I think, represent two things. Firstly, that, that Jesus is the light of the world. That Jesus says, you go from here, guys. We'll go before you. He'll show you the way if you look to him. If you read your Bibles each day, if you keep coming to church, if you open yourself to him in prayer, he'll show you the way to go. He'll show you the path that he has for each of you. Let him light your way in the darkness of life. That he'll be there to comfort you in the tough times. He'll always be alongside you. So Jesus is the light of the world, but also... You know, we are giving you candles to say that you are now lights in the world. Because Jesus says, go and be my light in the dark world. And go and take Jesus' light that you have come to know. Go and take your stories that you've told tonight and go and tell them to others. Go and live like Jesus did to go and actually change the world. Be part of his rescue plan for the whole world. That's what we pray for you guys. And we know that you guys will do it. And we know that God has got big plans for you. But you go not on your own. You go with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit inside you. God with you, empowering you, equipping you, giving you the words to say, comforting you, guiding you. So we're going to say these last words together um, for them. Then what they're going to do is we're going to play uh, the blessing song. And as we play that, these guys, and I'm going to lead them out, are going to walk slowly out to the back, and we're going to sing over them God's blessing. And uh, I would like to just offer anyone here, you know, if you want anyone to pray about anything for you tonight, you know, we love to pray for people. And if there's something that actually you are worried about or something that in the service tonight that you want to respond to, just come to the front. And I'm trusting that my prayers will be here to pray for people um, and just bless you tonight as well. And that's for anybody, whether you're a Christian or whether you're not. We would love to do that. And then there's coffee in the hall down the corridor afterwards and cake. And we'd love you to come and join us. So God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. You have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. So go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.
Beautiful. 